A special thank you to Native for sponsoring today's video. And also happy Father's Day, but rather than skip this week because of the holiday, I decided that it might be a good idea since we've been doing so much Dollar Tree content recently that I would share with you guys a few new Dollar Tree projects, but then also kind of recap on some of the projects that we've done as they have been some of our favorites. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. For the first new project, we will be making a bronze hanging planter. So to start, I grabbed this wooden plaque from the Dollar Tree as well as this fishbowl style vase. And so it could hang, I needed to also grab a wreath form. So this wreath form either came from the thrift store or the Dollar Tree, but the Dollar Tree has very similar ones to this one if I did pick it up at the thrift store. The thing I really was trying to kind of consider when I was doing this project was I wanted to make sure that the wire from the hanger would be kind of disguised. So I had to make it almost look like it was all one piece. So I started out with a flathead screwdriver, just making marks in the middle of this wooden plank. Once I was able to carve enough out so that way the hoop ring would be able to sit inside and the fish bowl would be nice and flush on that wooden plank. I just needed now to attach everything with some adhesive. So I started out with a lot of super glue just to make sure that everything was going to stay nice and intact. And then I went in with some hot glue as well, just to give it a secure hold initially before I add my spray paint. So for the spray paint, I decided to start out with this satin black by Krylon, but I felt like it just felt a little bit boring. So I decided to then go in with a couple combinations of gold spray paint that I had on hand just to give it a little bit more variation and then I just added a sealant. Grabbing some floral foam from the Dollar Tree and some scrap florals that I had on hand, I'm just going to hot glue the bottom of the floral foam so that way it doesn't slip out because this will be up quite high. I just decided to add enough hot glue to kind of secure everything in place and then add the floral foam inside. While I do feel that the Dollar Tree has definitely stepped up their game in the faux floral department, I just wanted to use something that I already had, but you could of course use florals from the Dollar Tree if that is your preference. I'm just cutting them down to the appropriate size and I'm just going to hang it using the suede ribbon that I have on hand. This project only ended up costing me about $5 and I think it looks great in my office. Next up, we will be making some large scale stone wall art. So to start, I grabbed this black poster board from the Dollar Tree as well as this hula hoop, and that is going to kind of function as our frame for this wall art piece. So to start, I just removed the sticker that's on the hula hoop, and then I also picked up several packages of the black river rock stones. I traced the hula hoop around the poster board and then cut it out and attached the two together using a combination of super glue gel and hot glue so it would be one complete piece. So I started out by just placing all of the stones on their side because I thought that that just looked better. I knew it was gonna take more time that way because um, you're obviously going to be using a lot more rocks, but I ran into a little issue. So here's kind of the problem I'm running into is the weight of this is becoming to be too much for this little poster board. So I think the best thing now is to just make it kind of a frame like this, because obviously you're using so many more rocks when you turn them on their side because they're gonna be covering less surface area. Um, so I think now the best thing to do is we're just going to basically create a frame doing it this way, and then we're gonna place them flat this way so it, we're not like overloading the poster board and it's just gonna fall apart. Because I wanted to make this a totally Dollar Tree project, I grabbed this picture hanging kit from the Dollar Tree as well. And I started out by just drilling small holes on either side so I would be able to attach this wire that also came in that same picture hanging kit. To kind of alleviate some of the pressure that would be on this wire, I did add a lot of 3M stickers to the back that you can also pick up from Dollar Tree. This wall art piece cost about $10 to make and it gives this sort of organic and earthy feel in my bedroom space. As mentioned earlier, today's video is sponsored by Native, who has an incredible line of body washes using clean, 
effective and simple ingredients, so simple that you and I can understand them. Native body washes are made using plant-based cleansers as well as being sulfate and dye free. And they are also vegan and cruelty free. So those are all qualities I'm looking for when I'm choosing a body wash without sacrificing scents. So for summer, I love this citrus and herbal musk in the morning if I'm showering, but I love to use the sandalwood and shea butter or the coconut and vanilla if I'm taking a bubble bath after the kids have gone to sleep. It's kind of like the perfect way to end the night. So for me personally, you guys know I love decorating with nature. I love natural scents, but if you are somebody who likes something a little spicier or if you want something that's a bit sweeter, they have an option for everybody. If you guys are interested in trying Native, use my link and code Garcia DIY to get 20% off of your first Native order. This offer is available site-wide, but only for a limited time, so make sure you stock up and save. So go check them out and let me know what you guys think. For the next project, we will be making some marble wall hooks. So a really easy way to get kind of a marble base is to use old trophies. You can find these at thrift stores as well. I've done a marble base project that was a Dollar Tree project in the past, but this time I wanted to make some really pretty wall hooks for my bathroom. So grabbing an old trophy base, I grabbed several different hooks from the Dollar Tree just to see which one I would like the best. And I ended up choosing these ones. You get two for a dollar and 25 cents. I also tried out these magnetic ones that I thought would be more appropriate maybe in like an office space, but I decided that I needed hooks for my bathroom and this was gonna be a nice solution. So I grabbed some super glue gel also from the Dollar Tree and I'm just adding small amounts of super glue gel to both the top and the bottom of where the trophy used to be inserted inside. What's nice about this is you're actually just able to use that hole to hang it on your wall as well. So once I added enough super glue gel, I just then added one of the hooks from the Dollar Tree and I just straightened it out and then I clamped it down so it would be nice and secure in that exact. Cut the screws down so they would just basically be decorative and this is how they turned out. The next project will be the Distressed Jug Vase. Seeing all of the Distressed Pottery pieces at Pottery Barn really inspired this project. And you can definitely create a similar look using Dollar Tree things. It's just going to require a lot of steps. So I started out with a glass vase that I spray painted, again, just in that chalky white spray paint, just to kind of level everything out and make my clay adhere better. So this clay also came from the Dollar Tree and you only need a little bit because basically the first thing we're gonna do is just create these little handles that you see on a lot of pottery pieces. I started out by just rolling out the clay and then I just cut four equal sections and applied those on to this face. With the basic structure done, it's just time now for some paint. I like this spray paint a lot because it gives like a super matte black, like even more so than like the flat. This still does have a little bit of a sheen to it. Whereas this is like completely matte black spray paint. So I love that. So I would just jump back and forth between like this one and this one, then this one, then this one until I like got like a lot of layers on there. So with this one, you can tell it's like almost empty, but um, I think I'm gonna just dust it now lightly with this and then we're gonna seal it. The last thing I did was I applied both flour and cinnamon to again, just add to that distressed quality that you'll see a lot in high-end pottery pieces. Definitely a very buildable project. You could add a lot of distressing or a little bit of distressing. It's totally your personal preference, but you should end up with something like this if you're like me and you like a lot of texture and a lot of layers. Pottery Barn tends to use a lot of olive stems in their floral arranging, but the ones from Dollar Tree are not the best. I will link down below in the description box my favorite. And this is how this project came together. It was, again, a lot of steps, but I still think I was able to save quite a bit of money because a lot of the things I already had on hand. The next project will be the glass table lamp inspired by something I had seen at Crate and Barrel. So to start, I grabbed the taller of the two sizes of the Hurricane base, which is nine inches tall. And then I grabbed this thrifted lampshade for a couple bucks. And I'm just going to set this on top just to make sure the proportions looked correct. In order for this to actually function like a light, you could of course use these lights from the Dollar Tree, but I prefer the ones on Amazon. So that way I can just use my remote to turn it on and off. And this is the end result. I I actually added two puck lights so it illuminated from both the top and bottom, but this was a super affordable way to get this high-end look on a budget. 
while I was perusing around Pottery Barn for the summer, they had a lot of coastal inspiration with seashells and seashell bases. And I knew that we could kind of create a similar look using some Dollar Tree materials. So I started off with one of these bases from the Dollar Tree and I spray painted it in a matte white finish. And then I grabbed a few bags of seashells also from the Dollar Tree. And we are just going to attach these seashells onto this vase. So I actually started at the top instead of the bottom for this project in order for it to have kind of like an overlapped effect. I also focused the smallest shells at the top that would get kind of progressively bigger. And then while the vase was at its biggest, used the biggest seashells and then kind of tapered down, basically just following the silhouette of the vase already. Another thing I did was I just made sure that that specific shell was going to fit in that specific spot um, well before I added my hot glue around the perimeter of the inside of each seashell. So like I said, I just kind of tapered it down, focusing the small shells at the top and the bottom and the biggest shells in the middle. And that really wrapped up this project. This was a super affordable way to get this kind of Pottery Barn coastal inspiration that I was really loving for the summer season. The next project was inspired by something I had seen on the CB2 website, and that was to make a black leather tray. Crate and Barrel has so many amazing options for trays, but they're oftentimes very expensive. So I took this frame that I actually got for free at a garage sale that was broken. So I just repaired it with a little bit of super glue gel and then I just spray painted that black. And then from the Dollar Tree, I actually grabbed a few things. I grabbed a package of that faux leather fabric also in black and one of these kind of wooden pieces. I'm not exactly sure what people use these for, but I decided that it was going to be kind of the perfect fit for the tray. I didn't want to use a canvas just because in that way it wouldn't be totally straight when you would go to set something down. So I thought that this was a better option, attached everything with some super glue gel, and then also added some handles on top that I had left over from when we redid our kitchen. And that really wrapped up this project. I think that for under $5, this looks really high end on a budget. The next project is to make a faux potted fern. So while at Pottery Barn, I saw this faux potted fern for $59 and I really loved it. I almost contemplated buying it, but I thought we could probably come up with something a little bit more affordable at the Dollar Tree. So while you're looking at the ferns in Dollar Tree, there's a specific one that you wanna get. It's this one right here, not the one that looks really fake. I also grabbed this here from the thrift store just to give it a little bit of variation and it was only 25 cents. So to start, I ended up using a bowl that I already had, but you could of course use a bowl from the Dollar Tree. Because that bowl from Pottery Barn was an actual planter and mine is just a glass bowl, I had to add a lot of different types of spray paint. So I started off with a stone spray paint and then I went in to give it kind of like a reddish terracotta undertone. I used this sea glass spray paint that I had on hand and then I used this high heat spray paint to kind of finish it off. Another thing that that planter had was some kind of moss growing around the top of it. So once all of the spray paints had dried, I sealed it, I brought it in Side and I used some Dollar Tree paints to kind of create this sort of faux moss-like look around the top of this planter bowl. I just dabbed it on using a paper towel just because I think that that gave it kind of the most organic-like look and not super perfect because the one from Pottery Barn was also that way as well. So once the planter was done, it was time now to add our styrofoam. So I wanted to use these styrofoam balls here so that way they kind of had a little bit of variation versus using just like a square that would just be very flat. So again, using some black river rock stones, I'm just going to hot glue these down in place after adding our ferns. And this is how our faux potted asparagus fern from the Dollar Tree turned out. While I was shopping around Pottery Barn, a lot of the decor that was going on in the store for the summer had a lot of frosted glass. Um, and sometimes it was tinted, but sometimes it was just normal frosted glass. So really easy thing you can do is grab any glassware from the Dollar Tree. And this example I'm gonna show you is to make some frosted glass candle holders. So I also grabbed two of these fluted tapered candle holders, as well as some frosted glass spray paint. So to start, I'm just going to actually spray paint these pink tapered candle holders white 
in a just linen white chalk paint that I already had on hand. And I'm also going to apply two to three coats of the frosted glass spray paint onto the hurricane vases before we kind of combine everything together. So that was fine, but I kind of wanted to add a little something extra to the tops of these. So I'm gonna go in with some metallic gold spray paint just to the very top. I did not know where my gold leaf was at the time. Otherwise I probably would have just used that, but I have this in my garage, so decided to use it. I'm just going to spray a little bit into the cup and then taking a foam brush from the Dollar Tree, I'm just going to line the perimeter of the hurricane base. Once the tops of those were lined in that gold spray paint, I then went in and I added the tapered candle as well as the tapered candle holder. And then I filled that around with sand just so you wouldn't see that fluted tapered candle holder. And it just looked a little bit more summery and fresh. And I love the way these came out. This was one of your guys' favorite projects as well. And it was super simple to create. For the next project was to make these pedestal candle holders. So they were inspired by the Athena Calderone drop through Crate and Barrel, but these were quite expensive. So I thought we could definitely create something on a budget using some Dollar Tree materials. So to start, I went to the hardware store and I grabbed these pipes here that are 3 fourths of an inch in diameter. Again, you could of course use a bowl from the Dollar Tree, but I actually found these that I liked a little bit better because they were already a similar color story to what I was trying to replicate. So to start, I'm just going to super glue gel these directly in the center of these bowls. And I just add enough so that it will be able to attach, but I don't want a lot of glue kind of spilling out the bottom either. So for the inside, I kind of wanted to match the inside of the bowls to the outside of the bowl. So I started off with this multi-textured spray paint that was a lot more kind of diffuse Fuse than the stone spray paint because it was just a subtle texture, not an actual stone-like texture. And then I went in with this ultra matte um, kind of khaki colored spray paint to kind of just level everything out. So for the pedestal part, I contemplated using a glass base or a cup kind of flipped upside down from the Dollar Tree, but I actually opted for these candle holders instead. I added super glue gel around the perimeter of the top of this candle holder and then attached it onto the bottom of the bowl. And this was the end result. I think that this looks really chic and it was so much more affordable than anything I saw at Crate and Barrel. Next project is to make a succulent bowl. Pottery Barn has so many different, really beautiful options of succulents, and they do look really beautiful, but they're really expensive. So again, of course, you can use a bowl from the Dollar Tree, or you can try to find something at your thrift store. So the one that I found at the thrift store was actually perfect for this project, but I did end up picking up the succulents at Dollar Tree. So once I brought the succulents home, and I kind of tried to play with it in this planter that I picked up from the thrift store, I wasn't crazy about how vibrant the succulents were because if you ever have the opportunity to actually go to Pottery Barn, you can kind of see they just are a little bit more subdued. So I just kind of detached all of the pieces that were attached either to like a little pot or a clip and I poked holes in this planter pot. But before I permanently attach them, I decided to try something and that is to take some frosted spray paint just to kind of mattify them and not make them so vibrant because that's more similar to what I had seen at Pottery Barn. Once that had dried, I then just permanently attached them using some hot glue and this is how it turned out. For the next project is to make a frosted glass garland. While I was at Pottery Barn, I saw that they had a lot of kind of jute frosted glass garlands around their store, but again, quite expensive. So taking some leftover old ornaments that were clear gave them some coats of frosted glass spray paint, as well as just flicking on a little bit of white paint as well, just to kind of give it this kind of salty-like appearance. Grabbed a jute rope also from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to use that to kind of string along these now kind of ornaments onto here to make a garland. So the only thing I had to do that if you don't have this tool that might be a little bit tricky is I had to kind of create a hole at the bottom of each ornament so that way it would be able to kind of function almost like a bead instead. So I used my heat tool here. They do sell this on Amazon, which is where I bought mine. So I can link that for you guys in the description box below. I also wanted to kind of trim down the tops of the ornaments so they weren't so high. 
So then once I fed it through, I just tied a knot at the top and then added some hot glue to make sure that it would stay in place. I ended up using 10 ornaments for this project and one strand of jute rope cording and I spaced each one out about two inches and this is how this garland came out. Next up is to make a faux designer book. So for this project, I was inspired by Anthropology. They have so many beautiful home decor books and I like to go to Anthropology to see how they kind of style them on tables and dressers and things like that. So when I came across this book at the Dollar Tree, it was large enough in scale that it could accommodate this AD linen bag that I picked up from my thrift store for just a dollar. So I thought, what if I just kind of covered this Dollar Tree book in this linen-y fabric? The only kind of problem I ran into with this project is that although this book from the Dollar Tree is massive, it still was not big enough to accommodate the entire graphic. So that's the only thing I don't necessarily love about this project. But I basically just did my best to kind of center the seam onto the spine of the book so that way I would be able to grab as much of that graphic as much as possible. Once the graphic was centered on the book as best as possible, I then just took some scissors and I went in and just kind of removed that section that you don't need from the spine. So that way I would get nice clean cuts on the inside of the book. The most important thing too, when you're working with like letters on graphics and things like that, you don't want to pull your fabric super taut. Otherwise it'll be kind of like wavy on the book itself. Tucking in and gluing all of those loose ends. And I'm sure one day I definitely will splurge on this $99 architectural digest book but for now this is a nice substitute for the next project is to make some coastal artwork so I have a couple different options here so the first option is just to take a frame I found this one at the thrift store and to grab a bag of seashells so all I saw on Pottery Barn's website was they had seashells scattered along a canvas and it looked to be almost like they had plastered over it so I also grabbed some caulk as well as some white acrylic paint and I mixed the two together and I painted over all of the glued down seashells onto the canvas I think this is a really easy way to kind of get some coastal artwork that is still pretty neutral and on a budget. Another easier option for some wall art ideas is to take a wall art reproduction from the Dollar Tree and to cut it out from the canvas and add some gloss Mod Podge and just kind of doing so with a brush to kind of make it almost look like an oil painting. I basically just made small X marks to give it that movement that you would typically see from an oil painting and I popped it in again a thrifted frame that I've already had. For the next project is to make a pleated wood vase. So I grabbed several packages of these wooden planks here from the Dollar Tree and I believe you get six in one package and I ended up using three packages total. So I also grabbed a hurricane vase and the first thing I'm going to do is actually just spray paint it brown. I tried this spray paint but it was just pulling way too orange so I went in with a darker brown spray paint and that seemed to work out a little bit better. While the spray paint was drying, I then went in with some gel stain in the color coffee and I stained all of these wooden planks down, both the front, the back, and the sides to make sure that everything was really nicely covered. After sealing everything with some polycrylic, I then went in with again some super glue gel and I super glue gel down the sides of all of these wooden planks. I just made sure that if I added one to kind of one side that I balanced it out on the other side just to make sure that everything was as evenly spaced out as possible. I didn't measure anything. I kind of just did this by my eyes and it worked out really well. Wooden vases can oftentimes be quite expensive, especially from stores like Crate and Barrel. So I think you're able to get this kind of sculptural wooden vase look on a budget using Dollar Tree materials. Next up is to make some iron candle holders. So to start, I grabbed one of these, I believe they're jewelry holders, and I just removed that top piece and then figured out that these candle holders that are kind of just like 
cheapy metal from the Dollar Tree. And just to kind of elevate them a little bit, I'm going to add some super glue gel on the inside of these and place these inside of here so that way they now are kind of like one more substantial piece of home decor. To give them more of an iron-like look, again, going in with this multicolor textured spray paint that just gives a little bit of texture, not full-on stone spray paint. And then I'm gonna go in with some matte black spray paint as well. This one was in a nice flat finish, and I really love the way these came out. I still have these in my son's room, and I think they look much more high-end, but only cost $5. Moving along into wall art. So Crate and Barrel has a lot of beautiful options, but they're oftentimes really expensive. For example, this piece of wall art costs almost $300. While you won't be able to find that exact thing at the Dollar Tree, what you will find are these pre-cut pieces of wood here. So here's me at Dollar Tree looking like a crazy person, laying out kind of the orientation of what I had in mind. I ended up purchasing 10 pieces in total, and then I just placed it on the back of a frame that I already had, just so I could get an idea of spacing. And then I pushed all the pieces together so I would be able to kind of see where I would need to join all the pieces. So I just grabbed a ruler and a pencil and made my markings all the way around this piece so I would be able to know where I was going to need to drill on each side. I used a 1 16th inch drill bit and I drilled directly in the center of each of the sides of these wooden pieces. And then for the wire, you can obviously use something from Dollar Tree, but I just wanted to use something that was sturdy and something I already had. So I'm just going to take the wire from these old hangers and I'm going to use that to connect the pieces. I cut each of the wires about two and a half inches long, allowing for there to be space to actually go inside of each wooden piece. Then I'm going to take some 220 grit sandpaper and just sand down all of the rough spots and the pencil markings so that way I have a smooth surface to stain on. With all of the surfaces prepped, now I'm just going to take this stain by Minwax. It's a gel stain in the color coffee. I'm gonna take a paper towel and I'm going to stain all of the fronts of these wooden pieces. I ended up splitting this piece in half, so I did the bottom half and then I worked on the top half. Once both of those were completed, then now it's just time to connect them together. So I'm just going to take my wires again using the holes I had drilled and connect them with a little bit of super glue gel on either side of the wire. Finishing the edges off with a little bit of dark brown paint and this was the end result. When it comes to glassware pieces, I feel that obviously when they're of a larger scale, you will be paying more unless you go to the thrift store like I do. But when it comes to kind of the smaller scale pieces, I always just suggest going to the Dollar Tree or to the thrift store because you can essentially find the exact same thing that is so much more budget friendly. So for example, using the hurricane bases again from the Dollar Tree, I actually found these at the thrift store though for just 30 cents. They're the perfect fit and they look so similar to these ones from Crate and Barrel but were a fraction of the cost. Even just the simple hurricane bases here is essentially the exact same thing but for only a dollar and 25 cents. Fill it with your favorite flowers and you can have such a similar look on a budget. For the next project is to make a pleated wall sconce. So one material Crate and Barrel uses quite a bit is stone. So to start, I grabbed two napkin holders from the Dollar Tree as well as a few packages of these dowels here. And I'm just going to kind of line these around these napkin holders and make almost like a sconce. The first thing I needed to do was attach the napkin holders together and I just did so using some zip ties and then I just removed the excess. Again, I'm going to use those Amazon pucks just because I like having the ability to use a remote instead. And I'm just going to hot glue each individual dowel as straight as possible around the napkin holders that are now combined. Lining these up pretty perfectly was kind of the most tedious part of this project because if one kind of became crooked, then every subsequent one after that would also then be crooked. So I just wanted to keep them nice and straight and then I went in with some white spray paint, but one thing that bothered me was just there were like little globs of hot glue that I could still see. So to kind of disguise that, I then went in with some stone spray paint, but that still wasn't good enough, so then I grabbed some spackle from the Dollar Tree, mixed it with some acrylic paint, paint and then I painted that mixture on this wall sconce. Okay. 
And last but certainly not least is to make a stone vase. So as I've mentioned several times in this video, that Crate and Barrel incorporates a lot of stone in their decor. And if you happen to watch my thrifted Crate and Barrel dupes video, you'll know that I use these little white stones from the Dollar Tree to kind of embellish this wooden mirror. So that is definitely one way you can use these white stones. But another way, and definitely a much less time consuming way is to find a vase that you like the shape of from a store that you love and then just try to replicate it as best as possible using a glass vase from the Dollar Tree. So I actually used this vase here. For this project, I first finished the top of the vase and then I worked on the bottom. So what's nice about this project is there's no adhesive because the spackle actually holds the stones in place really well once it's hardened. So I added a decent layer of the spackle around there and then I added the stones, kind of pressed them into the spackle. And it kind of is like a puzzle. You just wanna make sure that all of your pieces are fitting well, but even if they don't, the spackle kind of almost looks like stone in its own way. So it's a great kind of medium to use for a project like this. I had so many of those stones left over from doing the mirror, so I was happy to be able to use more of those up on this project, but it's a really affordable way to get a kind of high-end inspired design on a budget. And that about wraps it up for today's video. Let me know down in the comments which of these Dollar Tree DIY projects was your favorite. And also don't forget to check out the link in the description box below using the code Garcia DIY to get 20% off of your first native order. I promise you guys, you will not regret it. And I will see you guys next Sunday for a very fun thrifted dupes video. Bye for now.